Hello guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Fahaz. We'll be talking with Shannon from uh, Contour Fahaz GTA. Uh, she's the uh, local expert on Fahaz. And so um, she is here to answer all your questions about post-op Faha care. All right, Shannon, thank you for joining us. Hi, nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, so for those of you guys that don't know, Shannon is the um, Faha expert here in Toronto. And she's the person I refer to my patients to uh, for the post-op Faha care boards, forms, and all of that other things. And since she knows about the topic of Fahaz a lot more than I do, I asked uh, Shannon to come and join us and share her, her experience and post-op care and answer any questions that you guys may have, because she's probably much better at answering these questions than I would be. So welcome and take it away. So a Faha, um, they originate in Latin America, and there they're actually used for not just post-operative care, they're actually used for... Um, when women have babies for uh, body contouring. So it's a, it's a normal, there's like stores on every corner in Latin America. Um, but uh, a majority of my customers are using it for the purposes of post-operative care. Um, I do get a lot of inquiries other, for other reasons. Um, mm -hmm. Do I have to have surgery to wear it? No, you don't. Um, can I wear it right after I have a baby? Absolutely. The purpose of it is um, high level compression um, when you start to go into the different stages, what we'll, which we'll talk about. Um, so the Faha itself, um, for contour specifically, it's a little bit different than what you would find like on Amazon or um, some of those other like uh, Instagram promos that pop up. Yeah. So contour is not... Um, a standard Faha. So we do sell standard Fajas, but our main business, uh, which we have over like 23 years of clinical research that we did to get and perfect this product. Um, and also too, we're one of the only, we are the first online um, bespoke custom made Faha company. So what are, what's the difference with our particular company is that we measure Fajas right to your body. So they're custom made. Um, and in saying that, if you buy one off Amazon, they may just ask you for one or two um, measurements under your bust, your waist, possibly your hips, and that's it. But uh, with a custom one, because we know not everybody's body frame size is the same, they may have a long torso, they may have a short torso, their hips may be bigger, um, the waist may be smaller. So this is actually made right to your exact measurements. You could order one off Amazon. It may, it may end up fitting you. However, if you're tall, if you're, you know, if you have a longer torso, it might end up cutting you right down in the middle of your stomach. So it's important that you get a Faha that properly is fitted to you, uses, um, certain mathematical um, formulas that we do use a contour so that it's fit right to your body. When I measure, I measure for over 25 different measurements. But today we're not here just to talk about contour, we're talking about what the purpose of the Faha and, and is. If, if I may add to that, so Faha is, is, is a garment that's a compressive garment that helps to shape your body and hold it in shape. Um, like you said, people use for all kinds of things in South America, they use it for shape wearing, you know, just under the clothes kind of, yeah. they contour your body, squeeze it to shape it to particular shapes, give, you, give themselves nice curves. Um, after pregnancy, you kind of <coughs> get things back in place. Women kind of shrink back into your pre-pregnancy body types. And then specifically for surgery, which is what we do, is right. to hold things in place. So after surgery, after liposuction, your body is very malleable. It's very, very soft. And with the Faha compression garments, first, we want to squeeze out the swelling, minimize post-op swelling and bruising. Two, minimize fluid collection. So sometimes people get fluid collection, it's called seroma. So we want to squeeze the body so there's no empty space for a fluid to collect and it gets resorbed. And then the nice cosmetic aspect of it is holding things in place and shape. Um, and this is also where I came in. I, I, I've been you know, doing these surgeries for, for many, many years. And I've been using standard typical post-op binders, compression garments after surgery. And I had two problems with them. One is uh, they're, they're tricky. They, they tend to bend, create folds. And no matter how much I would stress to patients, I need to move them, straighten them, adjust them to make sure they don't get lumps and bumps and lines in them. Uh, th those are still happening. Uh, and two, um, they kind of, squeeze you in just a very simple shape while a faha that's well well measured and well contoured to your body helps to create the the, the, cur the curves that we're doing and so I, i've been struggling with my garments for a while and then you know about a year year and a half ago a couple of my patients after liposuction ended up going to shannon getting a nice faha and i was like really impressed 
at the beautiful shape that the file was able to create. Because right after surgery, things are kind of weird. They look funny, lumpy, yeah. swollen, distorted. Things, you know, things can be a little kind of weird. But with the faha, and, and what you did for them, you were able to really mold them. So as they heal, they heal in those beautiful, beautiful curves. And I was like, I was really, really impressed. So that's what kind of piqued my interest into it. The other thing is fahas being as tight and being as well molded to your body, they maintain their shape better. The the right. biggest concern I have or com problem I have with compression garments was that they would bend and now this hard garment would create like lines. Right. Um, and, and it's very frustrating. You can have an absolute beautiful result right after surgery. The patient looks phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then they show up a week later with the garment that wasn't applied properly, which they haven't been taken off, they have been massaging and now they look they look like a disaster. They look like a horror movie. And you're like, oh my God, what happened? Mm -hmm. um, and it came to a point where I, I stopped getting people to wear garments because I'd rather have no garments, rather have them swelling, which we know will go away anyways, than to try to compress them and get these horrible deformities from mm -hmm. the garment. Um, right. and, and so that's, that's, where, that's where the faha comes in. Now, uh, to me, faha seems like, which I would describe as a shape where it kind of holds you in place and helps the fat to stay in place. Right. When I do lipo, when people watch our lipos, uh, I talk about SAFE lipo. The technique that I use is SAFE. Now, SAFE okay. is an acronym, refers to three steps. Separation, as A is mm -hmm. aspiration, sucking on the fat, and FE is fat equalization. The fat equalization is the important process that helps to give you nice, smooth results. What it means is after I finish doing liposuction, I go back and I'm not liposuction, I'm sort of breaking up the remaining fat, so all the irregularities and lumps and bumps smooth out and become nice and soft. When I do this, I free up the little lobules of fat, smooth them up, but now they're sitting there freely and right. garment could potentially come in and squeeze them, push them out and create indents because your, your body is very, very soft. And this is where you know I'm looking to files to hold patients intact. Abdominal boards are great to keep them from scrunching out, creating horizontal lines and, and the files to create nice curves to the body that I've tried to create on, on the table. Because like I said, on the table, everybody looks phenomenal. And then when they come back a week later, um, you know, it could look completely different depending on how well they wore the garment and what they did in the first week when they're very, very soft and malleable. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's important that they wear the garment. Um, I can relate and you know that that uh, I've been through surgery, so I know how important compression is. I mean, immediately at first, um, you know, your skin is so sensitive, it's like putty and you have to be really, really careful because, you know, uh, sadly enough, you know, Instagram has everybody with a small, small waist and, you know, uh, huge assets yeah. and um, you know people you know there's a lot of customers that I get I want a small waist I want a small waist. you have to you have to take the proper steps to get to that point because you can over compress and you can really yeah. damage your results as well Absolutely. right and um, that's really important too so I do get customers where they're like snatch my waist as much as possible because it's it's made to measure and I'm like you're going to damage your results you can't you have to gradually get to that point um, and everybody's you know, autonomy and tissue and the way that they heal, it's especially your lymphatic system, your lymphatic system that, you know, the stage two garment, the lymphatic system is, you know, when it starts to work normally again, that's the point, like you're putting in drains, um, you know, so, it, you know, it's, it's taking out a lot of the fluid that's happening and, you know, the swelling and everything else that's coming out of them. And, but once those drains come out, you know, it, the compression garment, the stage two, it helps to keep your lymphatic system once it's back in check and keep those fluids moving so you can actually, you know, release them yourself through, um, you know, massages and, and also to just, you know, drinking your water and peeing and making sure you're compressed so that it can get out of your body so you can continue your healing journey. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it is important that you, you know, underneath your faha, you also too are making sure that you wear, like you said, your abdominal board or your back board, your lumbar board um, and folds too, right? Yeah. So and making sure that you don't put the garment right against your skin as Yeah, well. so I was gonna say, you, you mentioned foam, um, and you also tell patients to put uh, sweatshirts, t-shirt, clothing underneath the fat, so it shouldn't be directly on your skin. Right, so I always, I always indicate to them, don't ever put it on your skin. Later down the line, down the line, we're talking months down the line, you, your body's healed at that point in time. But once you've had that liposuction or tummy tuck, or you, know, you wanna make sure that you're protecting your skin, your skin is, thinner, the tissue settling. Um, so you want to make sure that you give that barrier in mm -hmm. between, 
So usually my suggestion is always wear a seamless tank top. And if they don't have a tank top, turn it inside out. I get a lot of questions about, you know, well, what kind of tank top? I have one that's nylon. I have spandex. No, preferably cotton. Cotton is breathable and it provides that barrier in between. Same with the ab board. It should literally go like your your um, your layer of uh, uh, undershirt or your t-shirt if you want and then that's when you start to layer up after that you put your foams you put your ab boards and then the last piece of it is the compression part of it but even with your t-shirt your t-shirt underneath or your the garment or sorry um your, whatever you decide to wear your tank top when it's against your skin you have to make sure that it's smooth too, mm -hmm. because those wrinkles, if yeah. you're doing everything up yes. and, you, and you, you've got all these different layers of, of um, foams and boards and this and that, and nothing's smooth underneath, when you put that compression on, it's just going to squish everything and you're going to end up with lines and you're going to end up with wrinkles and ridges and things mm -hmm. like that. And that's also too, it's important why you wear a compression garment, because mm -hmm. if you don't wear the compression garment and you just came right off your table and said, that's it, I'm not going to wear his binder after he says, you know, it's important that you do because you can get those natural wrinkles and, and shifting mm -hmm. stuff like that as your, as your, usually your tummy area and the rest of your body settles. And before I forget, I want to do a little tangent and go off topic a little bit, massage. So we're talking about fahas and they are very, very important. But in addition right. to fahas, do not forget to massage. You need to do massaging. Exactly. Take the faha off to massage your skin or massage through the skin. Uh, you need to be massaging. Fahas kind of holding things in place. Massage mm -hmm. is what's going to soften things up. You will develop lumps and bumps no matter what you do, no matter how good of a lipo you had, no matter how good the faha is, because you have a surgical area of injury, surgical injury, scar tissue forms around and scar tissue tends to clump up. It comes to a little clump. So even if you look absolutely perfect right after surgery if you do everything perfect with with faha you will develop a little bit of what's called fibrosis and you must massage because faha alone is not going to fix it massage Never. is what fixes Never. fibrosis Never. right and then the faha is what holds it in place so right. we're not we, we've, we've done talks about massages before and you can guys check it out uh, on our youtube channel we have a little talk with uh, carrie our massage therapist about postal massage that's not a topic today but i want to stress it that is a very very important topic and without massage having a faha is going to be useless. It's not, not going to do anything for you. But going back to fahas, let's go all the way back to the beginning. Let's, let's again, just sort of differentiate. What is the difference between a faha and your typical post-op garment, post-op binder? So like you said, like the post-op binder is just your midsection. So your midsection underneath your bust area to your waistline. It's a standard garment. It's basically a standard garment. So um, you may have, and I've seen some of your clients where you've given them this binder and it's um, their torso is short. So they're folding it up in the back because they don't want to compromise any of your, your work. Um, mm -hmm. Or it's not long enough. It's not long enough in the front either, right? So it's not, mm -hmm. it's um, the fluid's pooling lower than um, where the, the, abdominal binder stopping mm -hmm. um, versus the faha and also too if they're wrapping that too tight too it can like you had mentioned that you can get your creases and, mm -hmm. and your line um, versus the faha itself in the earlier stages which is a stage one it's a softer cotton material it's a it's a more breathable material it's light compression mm -hmm. so i always get the question oh it's compromised <laughs> this is a common thing it's compromising my fat cells it's compromising my fat cells no it's a soft material and um, it's a breathable material it's so stretchy very stretchy um, and that's what you need initially when yeah. you first um, whether it be whether they use your binder or whether you, they're using a stage one faha, yeah. um, it's important that um, with the with the stage one faha, it's providing everywhere. Um, yeah. I get a question a lot: Can I just get one that's just a midsection or like a vest sort of type? I'm like, I don't offer that. Yeah. This is the same reason why we don't offer a style that's like a thong style, let's say, because one, we want to make sure that it's covering your entire abdominal area, yeah. both upper and lower, and making sure that it's providing that even and smooth compression. Yeah. throughout yeah um, and i saw there was a few people sort of went by and mentioned the fact that in the past i did not recommend files and um, i did not we, we've had our post of garments and they did the job um, what changed is um, i found that um, despite our best efforts people were not able to follow post of instructions and we were developing problems from the garments themselves like i said it was the it was the, the folding they were not taking the garment off properly um, and they were and the garment that we gave them seem to be creating more of a problem than than helping and so we went to you know maybe we'll stop using the garments and then okay let's try the files and let's see what that can do the goal is to sort of help 
and maintain the results that we're trying to create. And then there are people out there that don't wear files at all uh, and right. they get beautiful results as well. So file is not like it's, it's not like this magic that's going to take, you know, without it, you're going to have horrible results, but it's something that helps to maintain the results. Now that we know about them and a patient thinks, okay, I'm going to be doing a LiPo 360 uh, or I'm going to go for BBL. When should they start thinking about a file? When should they reach out to someone like you? Um, for the stage one, they can reach out to me right away. So the stage one is based on your current measurements, but then we usually, depending, you know, when I have that discussion with them, what are you getting done? You know, um, if you're getting a BBL, um, things like that, um, I'll have that discussion with them. And from there, you know, we use the stage one is not uh, customized. It's, it is still made in the sense that we make it manufactured at that time, but we use a standard chart, but I up it one size based on assuming that if they're getting a BBL, their projection is going to be more, their waist is going to be a little bit smaller, but mm -hmm. also taking into consideration that they're going to be swollen. They're going to be using some foams and things how, like that. How do you estimate their hip? Because one of, one of the concerns I heard from some patients, they, they feel like they're too tight on the sides. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of uh, losing their the width, uh, the side projection. So it's a range for stage mm -hmm. ones. So usually I'll ask them for their current projection size. So basically they'll take, the t they'll take their measuring tape. I ask them to look at their their um, bum from the side projection, see the biggest part that it sticks out today, put the tape there and measure fully around that hip area. When, if they tell me that their hips are currently 38, let's just say a 38, yeah. I can estimate that usually they're probably going to go up probably three inches to four inches in that area with their hips as well. Okay. It's funny. And we've had this discussion before you and I about, um, you know, everybody's BBLs is huge right now. It's a, it's a huge industry. I call it the Tim Hortons of, <laughs> of surgery. Cause I feel like that's what my drive through is like. Um, and you know, but they're more worried about their hips and, yeah. and, and, and making sure that their laterals stay and their hips stay in that fat. Um, yeah. you know, a lot of, a lot of women, um, uh, you know, suffer from hip dips, right? Mm -hmm. They might have a great frame, but you're there to make that magic of filling in those those hip dips or creating that illusion of a bigger, a bigger, more curvier uh, hip and that hourglass mm -hmm. figure. So they're more worried about that compression on their hips, but it's light compression. It's light compression for that mm -hmm. stage one. So it shouldn't be squeezing. It's measured at it, that particular one is you, we took into consideration what your measurements yeah. were and we've gone up a bit in the and, sizing. Front. And talking about the stage one, what exactly is the difference between stage one and garment? Because to me, I, I think they're very, very similar. We typically provide our patients postal garments for the initial compression, minimize filling, minimize bruising, and then they see you to go for a stage two. So what exactly is stage one versus postal abdominal binder? Um, so yeah, so the stage one, so I have lots of your clients that decide that they're going to stay with the binder. Uh, you give them the time frame that you want them to wear it for. Um, but with, with the stage one, um, it's like I said, it's softer, breathable cotton material. Our suggestion is, is that you wear that for basically up to 10 days approximately. And then you start moving into, um, the stage two, usually for the stage two, I measure it three days post-op, four days post-op, because I want some of the swelling to subside and things mm -hmm. along those lines. And, um, and also time the time it takes to create a custom garment, a custom okay. garment. So three to four days after surgery, patients get in touch with you and you yes. do measurements either in person or through FaceTime somehow you measure yep. them. Virtually, and, then, yep. and those are the measurements for the stage two. And then um, so and when, the, yeah. when, when will they get their stage two? So stage two takes approximately 10 business days um, mm -hmm. to receive. Um, our company, our factory is located in Latin America. Uh, Columbia is a big, huge surgery capital of the world. Um, so that's where ma most of the Faha manufacturers are. So it takes 10 business days on average to um, to get to you um, when they order it. Um, and then at the 10 to 15 day mark is usually when they'll transition into that at that point in time. Okay. Yeah. And then what happens then? Like, um, how long do people typically wear a stage two? Is there stage three? When do you transition? Do you make any adjustments? What what, what happens after they get their yeah. faha? So usually the first, um, I would say uh, once you're into the stage two, because you're in the stage one for such a short period of time, um, once you're into that stage two garment, you're wearing that at minimum, 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 at least four to six weeks. Because some people are about the Faha life and some people aren't. Um, and four to six weeks, I say on minimum, 23 hours a day, if you can, giving yourself a break, obviously, I'm saying 23 hours, but giving yourself a break to massage yourself, take it off, give your body a chance to breathe, et cetera, and then you can put it back on, but you're still massaging yourself throughout the day. 
right? Then of course you need to shower and keep your garment clean as well. So mm -hmm. that, that that full you know hour break or two hour break, I say 23 hours, but that's kind of exaggerating. But the longer period of time at the beginning um, to give yourself a break, and then as the weeks progress and you start getting into you know the eight week mark let's say or the three month mark at that point in time you should give in your body a chance to breathe and relax at night time so wearing the garment only during the day and then at night time taking that garment off um, some people still will wear but taking it off at night time and then at that point in time letting your body breathe and that's and the next day starting again with that i i do have clients that are eight months, nine months, you just had, um, you know, $6.84 there on your live the other day, you know, she's eight months post-op. She just contacted me earlier this morning that's saying, hey, let's get another one, right? So some, and, and that's where you're talking about the stage three Faha. So is there a stage three Faha? Technically it's shapewear. So um, if somebody contacts me and says, I want to stage three, I'm like, do you really want to stage three? It is shapewear. So it's just to provide you still a compression, not as high compression as uh, stage two, provide you more of a, a silhouette in your clothes and and just to feel that comfort because I remember myself even when I had my tummy tuck um it's it's hard to explain you you still want that feeling like I know a lot of women wear Spanx even after they've had um, their tummy tucks you just like that that feeling of having something being held in and it's that that it's more of a comfort level for people I think so that's what stage three is a lot, lot of my patients I see other than following all these different six dogs are very active and they're sharing their experiences and they're recovering and it's great at the same time understand that their experience may not really apply to you yeah. they may tell you that this is what what is good but this is what worked for them it may not work for you um, when it comes to post-op care and everything guys uh, you are going to choose a surgeon whether it's me or somebody else who you trust to take care of you you trust in this person to Put your, you know, take your life into their hands and to give you nice results, safe results. If you've done that, trust them to manage your post-op care. So if you have questions about your post-op care, if you have any concerns, questions, please reach out to your clinic, reach out to your surgeon. They are best suited to answer your questions. Um, if you're unfortunately in a position where you just don't trust your surgeon, that is unfortunate. Um, uh, but they know what they've done. They're best suited to guide you through your recovery, uh, recovery phases, stages, and making sure that you have a nice result and a safe result. So again, lots of good information out there. Good to know. There's beautiful pictures and everything out there. But ultimately, if you have questions about something, please reach out to your clinic, um, ask them. I, I find like some of my patients, sometimes I see on social media, they're putting out questions out there. I'm, like, I'm just like, like, why don't you just message us, text us? Like, we do our best to answer. We're happy to answer your questions. So why, why ask somebody who doesn't know your medical history, the details of your surgery for medical advice? But exactly. That's my, that's my little, little mini rant on the side right there. I did want to touch quickly on, on ab boards for a second because okay. I do see a lot of clients. Ab boards are great, like you say. It helps with your posture. It keeps things nice and straight and smooth so there's no wrinkling um, or indentations. But be careful of the type of ab boards that are out there because there are some that are really, really, really hard. It's almost like a piece of drywall up against your abdominal there's no um there's no flexibility to the abdominal board whatsoever you want to make sure that it's got some movement um to it as well and also too that it has an underlying um, uh foam that mm -hmm. provides that protection up against your abdominal uh, area versus something because the front of it is hard it's it is a, a, yeah. a plastic but in some cases this is this particular one um the, the surgeon made ones that i saw they are um, flexible. They move mm -hmm. with your body. I mean, I yeah. can't bend it in half. It's going to snap, yeah. but it does move with your it body. It contours to your body, yeah. Yeah, but some of them are very hard, very straight. Some of them have the um, curve around the sides, um, and uh, it can cause indentations. It needs to be flexible in some way. So yeah. just be cautious, making sure that there is some sort of padding and that it is flexible moving to your body. You're not stiff as a board. Okay. A uh, question about stage two outboard. What is a stage two outboard? I don't know. Um, there's just so, an board, right. There's not a stage two. Yeah. So there is ab, different stage board. Yeah. So there is different stage ab boards, particularly okay. with, with contour. We have different stage ab boards. So a stage one ab board, um, it tends to be a little bit thicker. The foam okay. is a little bit thicker, um, and also too, it's not it, that one. There is a little bit harder. The stage two, thinner foam, more flexibility um, in it. So it's just uh, a different version. And also too, even like this particular one, this is a long. 
a long version. Um, not everybody's torso is the same. So usually like a shorter board is about eight inches. And then this one here is a longer torso. And also to the shape of it's important. Like these ones are, um, or Surgeon Mate. Surgeon Mate is the other one that I sell. Um, they're made specifically um, uh, replicating basically what an um, abdominal would look like. Um, it's important. And especially to make sure it's got a lower tail because we do, the um, fluid gravitates towards your Pubic area, yes. People always area. complain about that. Yeah, exactly. And it's important so that you can get some of that um, compression down there as well. Yeah. And going back to outboards, uh, the reason why I recommend outboards is because after lipo, after aggressive lipo, uh, again, you're very, very malleable. And people have a tendency to slouch. When you slouch, you know, you kind of crunch up and you get these horizontal lines. The outboard kind of gives you good posture, almost hyperextends you so the skin doesn't shrink up. Because if it does, this loose skin will wrinkle up and you'll have so many horizontal lines that you haven't had before. And, you know, kind of like um, a grape going to raisin kind of thing. Right, right. exactly. Yeah. Um, so we spoke about outboards. There also there was a question about foams. So foam, um, we like to put foam under the compression garments or flask. It's, think of it as just as padding, uh, just a little something soft that's going to absorb any irregularities um, that the garment may give you, again, just to give you as smooth of a result as possible. What Let's talk about garment care. So when, when can you take it off? How do you wash it? And what happens when you, yeah. when you took it off? Yeah, so when, we t uh, when, you when you take it off, so the suggestive is obviously to keep it clean. It's something that's wearing up against your skin, your skin shedding, it's uh, sweating, it's, you know, you've had surgery, you wanna make sure, especially in the cases like tummy tuck and you have incisions, um, even from lipo, that it stays nice and clean. Um, so my suggestion, of course, is um, wash it by hand. Um, do you have to wash it every day, especially if you're wearing it every day? I always say make sure you keep the genital clean, but make sure you try to wash it every uh, other day or every three days. Um, mm -hmm. You can wash it in the washing machine if you have to. Hand uh, wash is preferred. Uh, light detergent, no fabric softener. The fabric softener breaks down the material, the power net material. It will make it too soft and um, you want it to stay still firm and, and compression. Um, if it gets too big, so I've had this question a lot right now because of uh, what's happening in the world and, and uh, you know, you're shrinking and your fall mm -hmm. is getting bigger. Mm -hmm. um, again, make sure right now things are, are, are our hands are tied for every every business. Dr. Six, my business, uh, our hands are tied. It's important um, to make sure that you keep up your compression just because you're on the last hook. When you're on the, the Fahas only have, if you decide to go with a hook option, there's only a uh, one inch difference between the first hook and the last hook. Mm -hmm. If you're shrinking rapidly, just make sure you keep yourself with your foams and your boards. Um, just because you're on the last hook doesn't mean that it's over and you need mm -hmm. a new one. You can get a Faha altered up to four times. Does contour alter them? We do not alter them. I do have somebody that I know that I've worked with over the years that can alter them. You have to just don't go to anybody. It's important. They can ruin uh, Faha and, and these, uh, they're not cheap, right? Okay. So it's, it's, that's important as well. What are some contraindications for compression? So I'll tell you from my point of view, from a surgical point of view, um, if the skin vi viability is compromised, if, uh, if, if there's concern that you may be suffering from a lipo burn or the skin is very, very thin, or, or I'm concerned that the compression can create lumps and bumps, I will tell my patients not to do compression. We don't want the extra pressure. We don't want to create a dent or we don't want to create skin necrosis, skin death, which exactly. is what lipo burn is. From yeah. a file point of view, what, 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 what more would you add to that? Same thing. Same thing. If, um, you know, I, 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 I have a lot of your, your patients and your, your clients um, based, but I do see a lot of clients from doctors throughout the world. Um, again, it's, it's staying away from and being very careful when it comes to um, aggressive lipo burns, um, uh, tummy tuck scars, things along those lines. Also, too, even getting into, you know, their, their medical history. I mean, I'm not a doctor in exactly what you said. Um, it's important that their doctor knows their full medical um, history and somebody, even with diabetes, that's questionable for compression garments as well. Yeah. Right. So, so exactly. So that a diabetic patient as, as a patient may have compromised microvascular circulation. So by applying right. pressure, you may you may prevent blood supply going to the skin and the skin will potentially die. Um, so yeah, you, you may have two exact same patients have exactly the same thing done, exact same garments, but the patient with the diabetes is more prone to giving a faha burn than a patient who doesn't have diabetes. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So exactly. My next question here is what what is the strength, millimeters of mercury or, or pressure? How much pressure do garments have? And is there a difference in the st stage one, stage two, stage three compressions? 
I'm not going to give you our formula okay. <laughs> because we've been working on this forever. Um, but uh, that's the secrets of contour and, and different companies. But um, yeah, so that's a very technical question, of course. But, um, but basically, so do, I so does, thinking, does stage one, stage two, and three have different exactly the level of compression? compression. The okay. level of compression that's in there, exactly the mercury. Um, I would say probably thirty to forty percent on average. Like if if somebody was to do their research and they were to look on, Inst or sorry, on uh, Google or Google, like how much compression should I use? Usually it'll say that for the mid range. We'll say around a stage two, 30, 30 to forty percent are a little bit stronger. And again, it depends. Also, too, is because you're compressing other areas a little bit more, depending mm -hmm. on which area of your body you fit. For, for a patient, what should they feel? How tight should they feel in a compression faha? It should feel, it should feel, it should feel tight and comfortable to an extent because I mean, you, your, your body's restricted because it's, it's tight at the beginning. It's like wearing a tight pair of jeans, right? Eventually it's going to break in. Yeah. I always tell clients when they call me, it's so tight. I can't breathe. I'm like, it's brand new. It's brand new. It just came off the production yeah. line. Get it give your body a couple hours a day to work into it, to mold into it, um, and then allow it to break through uh, that way. Should it be to the point where you're feeling numbness or mm -hmm. um, feel like your blood circulation is being cut off? That I would say is an issue. Yeah. That's so an if, issue. If, or if, you, if you take like it off. Fingertips are going numb or your toes are going exactly. numb. Yeah. Exactly. Blue, exactly. Blue, that's, that's too much. That's, that's, that's venous much. congestion. You're, you're squeezing so much that the blood is not able to flow back. Arterial exactly. pressure is higher. Venus is small. So you you're between the arterial venous pressure and you're getting venous congestion. So that, that is a, that's a dangerous thing. Um, yeah, take your compression garment off in that situation. Yeah, okay. exactly. Next question is, how much compression should someone be having? So I guess you mentioned 24 seven or 23 hours a day. How often should they take the compression garment off? Yeah, so again, like I said, it's um, giving initially when you're in that stage two, um, because that's the one you're wearing for the longest period of time. You're wearing that, I would say, we'll say safely, I said 23 hours a day, but uh, obviously we know we have to massage, etc. So we'll say in the 20, 20 hour range to or so a day, um, giving yourself those breaks in between to let your body breathe, right? Yeah. So it's important. It's just like having a band-aid. You have to look at like a faha in a way is like a band-aid on your skin. It's protecting incisions. Mm -hmm. It's protecting your body. Even with a band-aid, every you take it off. You let your skin breathe. That's how it's eventually going to heal. So you need to be able to massage and take mm -hmm. it off and give your body that yourself that break and be able to shower once you know you get the clearance and and things like that so it's important yeah. to give your body that break there's a good question about the numbing like after surgery you will be a little bit numb that's true so the Absolutely. surgical area itself is numb the skin overlying may be a little bit numb but if you have a compression garment let's say on your arms your fingertips will go numb that's that's how you know like your your, your arm like your arm compression will cause yeah. fingertips going numb that is not surgery that's compression garment if right. you have a compression garment on your tummy your tummy may be numb so we apply the compression garment on the table and i measure i can feel what's safe what is not and i want to make sure there's no little pressure points that can create pressure sores because yes if you're numb and you don't feel the pressure prolonged pressure in the same area can cause what's called a pressure sore so right. you gotta be careful and i tell my patients you know make sure you have all these little folds and dents and we, we give our patients post-op instructions to make sure that being said as a little tangent off to the side uh, again, you may have numb areas on the surgical areas. You gotta be very cognizant of that. I had patients who had a tummy tuck. Her tummy was numb after surgery and she put a heating pad on her belly because she just wanted to feel better. She fell asleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. She developed a horrible burn on her tummy because she didn't feel that this thing was sitting on her. So yes, that's a very good point. Um, be very careful. Um, and if you have questions, speak to your surgeon. Absolutely. All right, so the next, uh, next question. Um, do certain areas require greater compression than others? Um, I'll, I'll answer probably not. You just want to have constant compression. Do you agree with that? We, we don't. We don't. Yeah. If you have more in one area than other, then you're going to squeeze it out and create a, like an indent. Exactly. So, exactly. Con, and, um, con, consistent, even compression. And this is probably the number one reason that I've converted myself to a faha believer is that a faha will give you a more even compression compared to a compression garment we used to use before. Like the garment itself was fine, but because it tend to fold, it created these little folds that created areas of increased pressure and potentially pressure source. And that's what hopefully Faha will avoid us from happening in the future. Yeah. And can we just talk about that for a second? Because okay. we do, you know, I still, 
we're not sticks, we're not boards, you know, we, we do have natural bends in our waist and things along those lines. So we do have a natural waistline bend and um, in the faha, there, that particular area, um, if you do end up getting a little bit of creases and things like that, it's important that you put foams there and have that layer there because your body has to bend. We don't walk around like a, you know, like a robot. You have to be yeah. able to bend your waist and, and, and have that movement there. There was a question about how, how does Kuntu Faha different from other Faha brands? And I think you've answered this early on, um, talking about how um, with, with Shannon, you do a lot of measurements. You create a really custom made shape that fits your body. When you go on Amazon or wherever else and you get yourself sort of standardized, small, large, medium, whatever shapes, they're made on sort of typical bodies, which may or may not fit you. Um, some people will be perfectly fine with it. If you yep. you know, if you really want to be particular about it, you spend all this money on your on your surgery, and you want to get the best. Get yourself a custom made, custom fitted faha like Contour Fahas does. Or I don't want to be like you know, we have you. I don't want to be like seen as promoting this specific brand. Any brand that is that is uh, uh, well measured to fit your body as compared to just generic shape that doesn't doesn't fit everybody. Right. Right. Some doctors don't do stage one. Some do. Um, is this, is this an issue? Sorry, I didn't hear you. Cut some doctors recommend stage one fast, some don't. What's, what's your opinion? It's, pers it's personal preference. I have, I have lots of your clients that come to me and they're like, they ask me about the stage one. I explain the stage one to them and it's personal preference. I always say to them, I, there's a couple of factors. I talk to them about, um, you know, your finances, the importance of their post-op care, things like that. Um, you know, for some of them, they're like, oh, I'm going to stick with, because it's short lived. That's stage one. It is absolutely, it's critical for sure, but it's very short lived. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a little bit, uh, it is pricey, right? It's, it's, I mean, for some, it can be pricey. They paid for yeah. surgery. They're paying, they've got to have all this money put aside for post-op care and fahas and massages and, and everything else. So, you know, we'll discuss that and usually I'll, we'll talk about if they want it. And if not, usually I'll say the most important thing is invest in a stage two. Okay. So there was a question that you kind of answered just now. The question was, um, how many files should you invest in or will you need? Uh, I get that a lot. I have, cause I have uh, customers where they're like, I want to order one in brown and one in a beige and one in black. And I say to them, you know what, this is my, this is my thing. Get one. Let's see how it goes. Your body's going to change so much, so much in the next week, two weeks, three weeks, six months. Get one. Um, I tell them how to wash it and things along those lines. And then let's talk about another one. When you get that one, tell me what you liked, what you didn't like. Maybe you want a short, maybe you bought your first one in winter and it, it was a longer leg. Now you want a shorter one because you'd be wearing shorts in the summer or you want a thinner strap or, you know, you say, you know what, I want a zipper instead of hooks this time. But usually I would say on average two. Okay. I would say two. Um, if, but I, if you want two right away, that's fine. More, I'm more than happy to help you. But I usually will say, get one. Let's talk about what you liked or it didn't like, or how you wanted to fit better. And you're going to change anyway. So let we we'll get your waist smaller. Um, in the sense of it, it, we measured you for this size, and in a couple of weeks from now, you're going to be another size. Next one is um, someone said they heard that fast can help with keloid scars. Is is this true? It is, it is. It actually can because of the way that it's compressing and, and keloid scars because it's um, uh, the way that it, it, it forms on the outside of your body and the compression, it actually helps to minimize those, that scar. So yes, it can. Okay. Uh, this is something I've never heard before. This is news to me. Now, mm. for those of you that don't know what a keloid scar is, a keloid is a scar that bubbles up like mushroom blood. It's an abnormal scarring when the body responds excessively and instead of having a nice scar, it's become really thick, and large scar. Um, there's something called hypertrophic scar and keloid, and people confuse the, the two terms. Um, I'm gonna make a wild guess that when people talk about keloids, they really talk about hypertrophic scars because keloids are really, really bad. They honestly mm -hmm. mushroom out. The difference between keloid and hypertrophic is that a keloid um, grows. It's, it's, like a, it's almost like a tumor, it grows. Um, beyond the scar itself, a hypertrophic scar stays within the confines of the scar but becomes thicker, fuller. And I'm gonna guess that um, the compression here of the fa is what helps. Um, when, if, if you are developing what you think is a hypertrophic or a keloid scar, please do talk to your surgeon. There's things that you can do. You can do silicone strips, you can do compression, which fa helps with, and there's injection that people can do as well. Uh, I wouldn't rely on faha alone to, to deal with the keloids, but um, I, I can see how compress, compressive faha and pressure on top of the keloid can help with that. All right. Uh, question about Faha and going to the bathrooms. How does that work? 
um yeah so once you have the fall on for the day and uh you know you're, you're taking it off you know in between but um uh, for those people that are longer term and they're not taking it off all the time in the middle um under the genital area there is the option of having it open or slight fold over so for number one you're good to go number two we won't visit that today you have to okay. take it off to do that okay is faha adult fajita I guess that's a funny question. Okay, we'll skip that one. <laughs> question is, do you, do you prefer people ordering faha before or after the surgery and why? Um, I guess it's like that question could be a little bit more specific, but definitely for, um, I would say for anybody that's doing a BBL, for sure, I will not measure you in advance for a stage two because I, I, I will never know what uh, yours or another doctor's projection, what the, what the end result is going to be. And I wouldn't want to compromise your results because it's based and made right on your circumference of your hips and your waist and things like that. Um, I have done them in advance before for lipo patients, mm -hmm. um, some tummy tucks. I have done in advance. Again, it's dependent on the surgery itself. I would say. And also too, if they're visiting, let's say if they're visiting Toronto and they want me to personally measure them, um, usually I'll, I'll, I'll accommodate them in that way as well. Okay. There's a question. Why do Dr. Six results look so good for his patients when, he, when they don't wear Faha? And why am I recommending Faha? Like I said, um, Faha is not this magical thing that's going to make you look good. The surgery will. Uh, the reason why I like using files because they help to maintain the results. I've seen too many patients that look phenomenal when they leave the OR, and when they come back a week later, uh, they look scary, horrific, uh, because they didn't take proper care, they were not properly massaging, and they were in compression garments that created lumps and bumps and indents. And um, so we, we're trying to avoid this and trying to hold things in place. I also changed my techniques a little bit. I'm doing more of the safe lipo technique, in the past, I used to do just a straightforward liposuction, suck the fat out. Now I'm doing a lot more fat equalization, which is breaking up the fat, making the residual fat soft and malleable. And it's, 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 it's very, very easy to distort the shape if you don't wear a proper compression garment, if you don't take proper shape of yourself, because everything is so soft. So um, sometimes people ask me, can fat move around? Well, it doesn't. But in this particular case, after, say, a fly pro, after I've broken everything up and fat lobules are sitting freely around, you could potentially squeeze them and move them. So you're going to power them to create an indent and a bulge on the sides. And for that reason, I'm trying to use more and more files. I'm referring patients to Shannon. All right. Um, why can't you wear a waist trainer over top of a faha? You can, you can. It's just not recommended at least until three months, at least okay. until three months, especially the ones with the steel boning waist trainers. Why, not why wait three months? Um, same thing because the, the faha itself, there's no steel boning in it. Um, most waist trainers do have that steel boning in it. Your body's healing. Um, the faha is tight already. You're going to double compress over the faha. It's important that you let your body heal. Um, uh, the fahas are made of a, a, a breathable power net material. So it's important. Whereas a, a waist trainer, it tends to make you really, really sweat. And um, you just you got to be really careful. You want to protect your investment. There's a question about uh, fees and prices. Is the uh, FAHA included in our procedure fees? It is not. Um, it's optional. If you decide that you would like to get a FAHA, we give you Shannon's contact information. She'll get in touch with you. And then she'll handle the measurements, the scaling, and also um, getting it for you. And then you guys pay Shannon directly. Uh, it doesn't go to us. If you are a Dr. Six patient, uh, you get a special Dr. Six deal. That's right. That's right. How long after tummy duck can you wear a FAHA? Um, so after tummy tuck, I actually do want you to wear our compression garment, especially if we have done muscle repair and, uh, and hernia repair. Um, compression garments that we use are, are tighter, stronger, and they're meant to support muscle repair, which I don't think, fahas don't normally do that, right? They're not, they don't have that same kind of compression, do they? They do. Like we, there is some that wear them for, um, for tummy tuck as well. Okay. Yeah. But again, it's go based on your yeah. doctor's recommendation. Uh, for, for my patient, especially if you had a hernia repair, please wear your compression garment religiously for six weeks. And if you had a tummy tuck, uh, tummy tuck only, uh, usually I don't refer patients to faha. I just, we just stay with the garments. Why not faha after the, the tummy tuck? You can if you want, but typically a tummy tuck is about muscle repair. And for muscle repair, I'd like to use a really tight uh, compression garment for muscle support. Uh, is it true that fat survival in the hips is only 10 to 30%? Fat survival is the same throughout the body. Question is, 
in the hips being tighter, how much can you really squeeze in? Realize that fat is really, really soft. It's like goop. And when you type, squish it into a really, really tight space, it's not going to stretch it out. So areas, zones of adhesion, zones of tightness will not expand. So it may seem like less fat survived, but really there was not a lot of fat I was able to squeeze in there or whatever was there got squished. Uh, Claire's asking, what else besides Fahas do you offer, Shannon? So do you offer boards and forms and what else? Yeah, I offer, yeah, I offer form, foams, I offer boards, um, I offer shapewear, uh, I offer scar creams, I offer, um, we have another topical cream that's assisting with fibrosis and burns. Um, so yeah, pretty much I offer uh, chin straps for lipo of your chin, um, mm -hmm. arm compression, all different things, all different things. So any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, by all means, I have some I'm knowledge in the in the world. I've, I've had a tummy tuck. I've had uh, BBL times two. I've had some liposuction done. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely am knowledgeable in the area of what's needed. And uh, yeah. Awesome. Shannon, we're almost going to run out of time. So I'll take this moment to say thank you very much for joining us. Thanks for everybody who joined us and submitted questions. Again, if I haven't had a chance to answer, please DM us and I'll be happy to answer. So, Shannon, thanks again. Well, thank you. Thanks, everybody. All right. Everybody thanks. Have a great day. Thank All right, you. Take care. Bye.